Hey, Alex. Thanks for joining. Came at a good time. I'm joined by my friend, Jeff Bjarnson. Am I saying that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for being here again. We're, we're doing an interview with interview. That's right. Uh, yeah, you're uh, you're one of my favorite guests because you bring gifts. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we, I came equipped we with just, Santa. We just recently, just a minute ago, did some absinthe. That was the first time I'd done that. That was very interesting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's powerful stuff. Yeah. And then um, we, we took some edibles a second ago. So this conversation, uh, it's, it's going to spiral at oh, a yeah. certain point. I don't know. Maybe it'll, it'll like, yeah. it'll just like come to the perfect equilibrium. Yeah. This Let's balances see. out. Yeah. It's, I think it's apt for these kind of conversations. Oh yeah. It's not a bad thing to do. So we're starting off relatively sober. And then we'll probably become more silly or more deep as we go. I don't know. We'll yeah. see. I, I imagine that's probably true. Um, anything coming up you want to plug? Ooh. Um, got a lot of house shows coming up uh, for the new year at the Twisted Tea Garden. Um, so I'm excited for those. January 5th, January 20th. If you follow the Twisted Tea Garden on Instagram, you'll you'll hear about those um and as far as music uh for my solo project i'm working on an album so i'm like halfway done with it i think as far as tracking and stuff oh cool i i recorded drums at blackbird studio recently so that was really cool it was in one of the really nice studios so it was, it was awesome and they're sounding great. I just need to quantize a few things. Um, but yeah, so 12 to 15 songs and it's probably going to be sometime in the middle of 2024, summer, late summer or something. I don't know. It's, it's taking forever. Yeah. And uh, five or six of those songs, four or five of them are from this album that I had out like in 2017 when I had this old band that I like showed them these songs I had and we like played them we recorded them put it we put them out and then the band disbanded it was called Vivid Youth was that in Nashville that was in Utah okay when I was still living there and then we disbanded right before I moved here um because I was like shit well we can't really like make music anymore. sure so and I was silly at the time and uh took down the whole album from everywhere because i was kind of uh I, I was really perfectionistic and i just wanted to start new so i moved here started brand new and like you know did the solo thing and renamed it to interview and then i kind of re-released some of those old songs and so, like, all the rest of those dormant ones are going to be in this new album. I've just had them hidden away forever. And they're really nostalgic to me. I recently looked back at them, and I was like, damn, actually, these were, like, pretty... They just bring back a lot of memories. And uh, now I look back, I'm not, I'm not so perfectionistic-minded when I listen back to it. I'm like, oh, if there are any mess-ups, I don't really care. Yeah. Those. It's just the feeling that is actually, I think, really kind of precious. There's got to be a balance. Like, because yeah. I know artists that are so perfectionist and it's like, I'll read yeah. something one day and it's like, you're 35, bro. What are you, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was kind of my whole journey with music is learning to not be so, uh, I don't know, so mad at myself for mm. messing up that's everyone's journey in yeah. the music world is as you get better at whatever instrument you're playing it's a matter of disciplining yourself but like still trying to have fun with it yeah and getting the right strategies for recording to get it the way you want it but also the way that like you feel is good enough and like you don't drive yourself crazy because then it's not fun anymore um yeah, besides that, oh, and the album will be called Only to Return. Um, very, you know, philosophical yeah. lyrics all throughout it that kind of resemble that. 
you know, we're born only to die again, to return to that thing that we came from, yeah. you know. Um, and then, yeah, other than that was spiritual, we're also working on an album that's taken forever. It costs <laughs> so much money and so yeah. much time, you know. It's a lot of time, effort, and money. Yeah, yeah. so that's going to be like a maybe 10 song album. Nice. And we're putting our whole souls into that shit. Yeah. Um, and it, it's not, it's, it, it's, it's definitely the best stuff we've ever made up until now. It's a lot of new, cool, kind of different stuff. Um, so that's, that's really, I'm really looking forward to that as well. So, hmm. yeah. You, you guys like jam so much. I feel like even in, the like songs that already exist like what when you're deciding what a what the recording is actually going to be like like that's probably a little different from like every performance like it's probably a little different that is different from the recording also yeah is it hard to decide like okay this is the thing that is going to actually be recorded and be thing people like hear on like as repeat and think of as this song mm. they're like is there like a pressure to decide what to make that? I, I, uh, am I am I asking this in a way that makes sense? Um, I don't know. I would just say, I don't know. I I wouldn't label ourselves as a jam band in yeah. any way at yeah. all. Um, I, I wouldn't either. I just yeah, like every performance, I feel like. I've seen you guys play a couple of times and it, it's a little different each time, even mm -hmm. if I've heard that song before, I feel like. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, we, I mean, we play every song we have to the T. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I mean, every song we have is well-defined and, but mm -hmm. we have so much new stuff, so many new songs that uh, I can see why it's hard to keep up with. Yeah. Um, Maybe but, I'm just confusing the actual jam with Sometimes we do throw too. in jams in between yeah. songs that are just loose, like mm -hmm. filling in the gaps, shit, like while someone's still tuning or shit. And then you yeah. know, start doing some lullaby shit. And then, because I think at that Dark Matter show where we okay. first ever met, we there were plenty of like silly jams in between. I gotcha. But I, so I, your I songs never... are concrete. Like, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got yeah. It. Like every single chord we play is like, we spent hours and hours like Got figuring it. it out yeah so i guess for anyone who's like a new listener it might seem like we we're, we're just like loosely throwing shit together but then uh i don't know everything's kind of like all right it shall be Got this it. way and try not to fuck up because it's very complicated oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. i think so, yeah that's i think that's also why i thought it's so what you guys are doing is so hard to imagine that that's all in your head and you're not just jamming is even that's even more difficult <laughs> yeah we, you're all very talented oh thanks i kind of miss improvising live um we used to do that a lot with our old drummer uh skylar rippy who's um he's not with us he uh Actually, almost to this day, a year ago, we lost him to, he just like crashed driving home one night. Damn. But we used to, we used to do improv shit mm -hmm. in the middle of our sets with him all the time when he was drumming with us. And those are, that was like the, uh, cause I still, I still never consider ourselves a jam band, mm -hmm. you know, the way people see, uh, you know, uh, what's that one band? what are some big like jam bands okay the, the one that like comes to mind Dead? i was gonna say dave matthews band oh. <laughs> yeah. like that is, that is a jam band yeah, yeah. but we I, we're nowhere near that we i do love improvising though yeah. live because it's like high yeah. stakes but you're also like okay what are we gonna do Whoa, oh, oh where's this going oh shit and it, it, it's something like that especially with the band who's like been together and like really well that we know each other well mm -hmm. in the way we play and the way we surprise each other it's just a, it's a lot of fun it's kind of like the way we're kind of improvising this entire conversation yeah. it's kind of like 
a, a fun little challenge, you know, like how, how can I make myself seem normal, but also myself, but also, you know, I don't think we seem normal at, I don't at all. So. That's what I love yeah. about your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're a great fit for it. Uh, Thanks. We were, you were talking earlier about how you can't beat yourself up for making mistakes with art. Um, I was recently having a conversation with a friend about how completely impractical English is. Mm -hmm. um, like, like I, I love it. I think it's a beautiful language. Uh, all the Latin languages are, yeah. but they're also like extremely impractical. Mm -hmm. um, how so? Okay, so compared to like an honorific language like Chinese or yeah. Japanese, I think it's actually more practical because um like having characters for every single word is like there there are like people in china that don't know all of them and like Man. like don't know how to like fully speak the language yeah english is really easy to pick up it's like it's it's entirely contextual mm -hmm. but what ends up happening is um words will have different definitions just based on who you're talking to based on area mm -hmm. um so, I mean, I don't know, in some ways it is efficient. In some ways it's very not efficient um, compared to something like Hebrew. Like I'm, I'm obsessed with Hebrew. Yeah. Uh, Are you fluent in Hebrew? Not at all. <laughs> no, I know is enough anyone of, fluent in Hebrew these days. Uh, I mean, so that's actually a good question because it was a dead language that's been resurrected. So mm -hmm. people don't know exactly what it sounded like originally uh, um but we have this own we have this new kind of phonetics around it that's basically been recreated mm -hmm. based on the symbols so okay. um but the written language is like it's it's amazing like numbers correspond to letters like a one b two c three okay um so if you're an ancient israelite and you're reading hebrew you're reading numbers at the same time that you're reading letters and a lot of ancient Jewish texts, like the Torah, uh, is a bunch of number patterns. That's like, the, this this ancient religious text doesn't make any sense. It's like, yeah, because you don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Like, they're not, they're, it's mostly number shit. Whoa. Like, yeah. Hmm. It's coded information. Uh, which, like, alpha if, numerical. Yeah, it's wild. Is that the word for it? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I'll, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, letters correspond to numbers. Um and like you can you can translate it into numbers but you have to sit there and translate it you know what i mean yeah if you're just someone who's fluent in hebrew you're just reading it at the same time it's like you're getting two messages at once Whoa. it's a completely yeah yeah it's what makes you wonder if they're actually more advanced at the time and something happened between yeah now and then um I might have talked to you about this before on the podcast, so I'm going to keep this short, yeah. but cut me off. We've talked about this already, but um, like I said, I'm obsessed with this. Yeah. Um, there's a thing called chiasms. Um, Chiasm. Yeah. Or, or chiastic literature. Mm -hmm. um, so ancient Israelites were very serious about um, storytelling mm -hmm. Um you, there is a way to tell a story and if you're not telling it this way you're not doing it right um and it's very rigid and um you know take this how you will but they were very serious about you could bind a spirit in a, in a story um if you followed a specific pattern um so that's a chiasm is uh this this ancient type of writing they were doing um find the spirit so the word torah uh, which is the old testament okay literally is the the hebrew word for binding so oh. torah means binding oh, okay. um and so basically it has to there's a lot more to it this is a very simplified version but it has to be told in a circle it has to start where it ends um yeah. and so this thing is contained within it um there's another jewish book called the talmud and um there's a story in the talmud where this guy makes a man out of clay and then he puts the tetragrammaton the name of god 
in its mouth and it comes to life and it protects the city. And that's called a golem. Um, we see that in a lot of fantasy stuff. You see that in, uh, what's it called? The, the, the ring. Oh, that's... <laughs> 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 that, that's Gollum. That's a little, di- that's a little different. <laughs> but a golem? A golem. Okay. Yeah. Um, they, they're all throughout fantasy. That's funny. That you, yeah. <laughs> Not quite Gollum, but uh, yeah. it's um, a golem is artificial life. So mm. um, creating life, basically. Uh, so, like, uh, anyway, the Torah itself. And they were, they were very, I mean, you can take it metaphorically. I, I choose to take it literally. The Torah itself is a golem. It's alive. Uh, so like in the New Testament, Jesus talks about how the Torah is the living word of God. And Christians don't stop to think about what that means. But he's like, guys, I'm trying to tell you, like, I don't know how more, much more plainly I can say this. It's alive. And like, and <laughs> no one's hearing him. And uh, so not only that, this gets way deeper. Uh, Tarot cards follow the same chiastic formula that the Torah does. Oh, shit. So there's a, yeah. Okay. So there's a thing called bibliomancy. I can do it right now, actually. Um, So, so like, we've all heard a story about like, I was, I was really low in my life. I was going to kill myself. And then I was in a hotel and I just opened a Bible. And the very first thing I saw changed my whole life. Uh, okay so i just opened it um this is isaiah 30 28 his spirit is like a floating torrent that reaches clear to the neck to shake the nations in a sleeve of destruction and the peoples will have a bridle in their jaws that leads them astray i don't know what that means uh (laughs) i don't know what any of that means uh but that was a bad example of what i'm saying but how uh, about this oh (laughs) That is From uh, the Una Bomber Manifesto. That's uh, that's what we did on the book club last night. Oh, you just uh, opened to a random spot. No, no, no. no. Oh, oh, you're saying <sighs> you're saying do Billy Mancy with it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. What, is it, what does it say? Any illusions about achieving anything permanent through social arrangements should be dispelled by what is currently happening with environmental legislation. So apt. <laughs> that My dude. That's what I was changed. just saying. My life is James. Um. So you were reading that one last night? We read that last oh, night. Yeah, the Unabomber Manifesto. Uh, nice. It was... Um, Not to change he, the subject. He, he, he killed a lot of people. Uh, uh, was was not a good person. Okay. Um, but he said some really profound shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we talked about that for like two and a half hours. I got pretty heated, actually. I drank a lot. Nice. And um, I probably could have dialed it back a little bit. Oh, but it was fun. We had a good time. Oh, yeah. Um, anyway... Bibliomancy, uh, yeah. basically people just open a Bible, first thing they see, it's like, oh, that's the message I needed. Mm-hmm. Same thing with tarot cards. Okay. You're just flipping through them, and it's like, oh, this one applies to me. Mm-hmm. And um, they both follow the same pattern. Not only that, but Alice in Wonderland, Lewis Carroll was an Oxford theologian. He was very much aware of what I'm describing right now. Oh, and he wow. based Alice in Wonderland off of the same formula. Oh, really? Like she goes to sleep in the beginning and she wakes up at the end. Mm-hmm. And uh, the Wizard of Oz, Frank Baum was a theosophist. He was big into occult stuff. And Dorothy goes to Kansas, or leaves Kansas, comes back to Kansas. Mm-hmm. So that's why to me, like I put like, I put like the Bible, Alice in Wonderland, the Phantom Toll Booth, Wizard of Oz in their own kind of category. Yeah. Um, and that's why I feel like these weird children's books almost sound like religious texts when you read them. Mm-hmm. Like it's very weird and strange, but you also can kind of tell there's like a deeper meaning to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Anyway, I'm obsessed with Hebrew literature and just the Hebrew language as a whole. Um, yeah. It's, it's fascinating. They Oh, so like, There's like, okay, so the Hebrew word for thing is the same word for word. So word and thing, same thing. Okay. So you cannot talk about something without actually talking about it. Mm, Um, Because the words don't, the words aren't really it. Yeah, exactly. Describe it. Yeah. 
Yeah. So there's no okay. metaphor. There's no sarcasm. Uh, it is, it's a very like, there's a way, there's a way things are done. And mm -hmm. that's like, you can't really, there is no way to deviate from it. And language affects how we think a lot. Yeah. Um, it affects, I mean, culture affects language, but language affects culture. Um, oh yeah, and the way we think affects language too. Yeah. In a way. So anyway, where where this long tangent's going is um, we can't beat ourselves up with when we are making art. Um, and like, um, I'm I'm a poet. I, I write novels, and uh, so English is my instrument. And mm. I think like people who understand English know best that it's very flawed. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but that's also where all the beauty is. Mm -hmm. There is no poetry without flaws in in the language. Yeah. Um, Shit. Like the French has a lot of great poetry too, and um, it's a silly language. It's yeah. extremely silly, but wow. it's romantic, you know. Yeah, and it yeah. sounds neat. <laughs> it does. <laughs> yeah. So oh, clam Oh, so <laughs> I will do no such thing. <laughs> but yeah, anyway. Well, that's really cool. You brought that all together to <laughs> describe how language interacts with the way that it's flawed and how anytime we're trying to describe something, we're never fully mm. describing it like what it is. Like, what is this table? Well, it's a, we call it a table, yeah, you know, um, but yeah, I mean, it's, I, I guess, yeah, it's the same way with, uh, I try to be poetic in my, my lyric writing, but like, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to be purely poetic when I'm also trying to keep it silly, mm. you know, and I kind of like the silliness of, of just words and yeah. the way I can just um mess around with them and i guess uh, it's fun to try to use words in a way no one's used them before yeah you know like everyone's tendency is to try to rhyme when they're trying to write a song um with poetry usually you try to rhyme right that's kind of the challenge yeah. of it and try to stay on track you know yeah that's a type of poetry rhyming. for sure yeah but i like um trying different ways of rhyming and I think I, I might have mentioned this to you before but um where I've re I uh over the past few years it's like I I get so it's so hard to find a direction when I'm like okay I need words for this song because I have this melody okay usually melody helps me figure mm -hmm. out like okay well how how can words fit this melody best, you know? Because every word has its, every sentence you speak has its own cadence. And I'm like, okay, how do I carry that? You know, not sound like I'm a robot. Mm -hmm. um, but I never want to write a song that is the same as all the other ones, or it's like, I'm sticks and stones or whatever, something about, you know, I'm falling in love. You know, I, I try to stay as far away from cliche as I can. Mm -hmm. And um, by doing that, it's challenging. And that makes it a lot more like a puzzle, you know? Mm -hmm. And a lot of my lyric writing, especially for my solo project, is like, okay, I have all these things and like, how do I piece them together and how do I make it come full circle, you know? Yeah. And um, it's fun messing around with different rhyme schemes, like where instead of, uh like you you expect me to rhyme this word with the next one but i do the opposite of that word and i continue that for the entire rest of the song and then i have one where like i speak a very easy to remember sentence like oh okay yeah roses are red and then uh instead of violets are purple it's like violets are blue and I do a lot of that shit with Spirit Ritual. Mm -hmm. And like, it's probably uh, shit that you won't even notice unless you're actually really listening. I have a hard time listening to words when I'm listening to music. Me too. I, I focus, I, I like the feeling yeah. of music mostly. Um, but I just like having fun with words. 
like you'll anticipate a word that rhymes with the one before it in whatever cadence, but I'll say the synonym of that word and continue that for the rest of the song. So it doesn't actually rhyme, but it's like weird patterns I've been trying to mess around with. Yeah. For and a lot of these aren't even coming up on this album. They're gonna be in future albums because uh, it's like so hard to put together. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that's just what keeps it interesting for me as far as playful poetry. I guess I could yeah. call it. You know. So I like what you said about like how melody can kind of help inform the lyrics. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Like. <clears throat> or the other way around. Yeah. Like art thrives under limitations yeah like the more confines you put on yourself the more artistic it ends up being yeah that's um, kind of how uh, adaptation is in general mm -hmm. like evolution you think of how yeah. we've come so far because of all of these limitations you know Pre pressure makes diamonds or something like that oh shit. Sure. yeah 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 like mm -hmm. we wouldn't have we wouldn't exist the way we do without extreme like stresses in our environment yeah 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 art's the same way yeah yeah i absolutely agree like and uh it's kind of like we're playing this game of life when we make art mm -hmm. you know we're we give ourselves these few things that we are putting our awareness towards i'm like okay i want to make this happen and this is what I have, and these are the tools, and how do I turn this into something new, you know? Yeah. It's it's really fun, and it uh, takes a lot of practice to get good at it, but that's regardless, though, because I think the point of making art is making something new, Yeah, and something different, and it's hard to make something different and really make something that stands out, especially nowadays, if you consider music there's so much shit out there even in nashville oh yeah there's so many bands that i still haven't even heard of they're probably like amazing yeah there are tons of bands that are like on their own journeys and don't sound very good it, it's, it's like all the time journeys you know <laughs> yeah it's all the time i'll i'll find out about a new band in nashville and it's like oh are they new it's like no they've been here for like five years what are you talking about uh, yeah like it's what crazy. Like I just recently discovered Zip Zap, like last oh, really? just last year. Oh, last and I'm year, like, oh, sure. and I'm like, holy shit! <laughs> well, or like you guys, like yeah. I did, yeah. Like it's crazy. Um, yeah. we, there's so much talent here. It, we're really blessed in that way. Oh yeah, absolutely. Zip Zap played at the Tea Garden last year Dude. on uh, September 18th. That Dude, really I bet show. that was fucking nuts. Yeah, we had Fox Grin. Have you heard of them? No. That's another really good local band. Okay. Yeah. Um, Fox Grin's amazing. Uh, and uh, then we had this band from Phoenix. And but yeah, uh, that's, you know, same with what you do with the podcast here. I love ha throwing house shows with like new bands that I've discovered. I'm like, yeah, what the fuck? This is amazing. Like, there's so much good stuff in this little town. But it like makes it feel like a really big town when you're like, whoa, they're like, yeah, there's so much. I wonder it's if it's something much. about Nashville. Like Nashville has a reputation, but maybe that's not all it is. Like maybe there's something that draws creatives mm -hmm. here or something. Oh yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, I didn't move here to do country music. That's mm -hmm. just kind of the hype that everyone thinks of when they think of Nashville and the downtown they think Broadway. And culture yeah. Broadway. Elvis and all these like you know things yeah. that everyone usually thinks of when they think of Nashville when I first moved here I was like oh boy uh, I had one uh, my uh, co-worker was like you you're gonna come back uh, wearing cowboy boots and I was like no that's no I'm Not gonna convert everyone <laughs> <laughs> but uh, nah I don't know yeah. Nashville I think every city is full of really cool bands. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. And I think a lot of the best bands are ones that you haven't even discovered yet. And yeah. Like, uh, there's, there's a I lot of that. gold that you have to dig for. And especially when I'm, like, trying to book a tour for my band or whatever. 
and I, I really have to dig and, and like I'll come across some gold and be like oh shit that's like a really Whoa. good thing too it's kind of sad to think like maybe your favorite song you've already heard like it's already oh, your favorite song oh yeah like that like there's never gonna be something better yeah than that's that. a sad thing it's mm-hmm. like it's like I'd much rather think my favorite song is one I've never heard before yeah yeah what could you say is your favorite song right now among many other favorites that you could just whip out and be like this could be my favorite song of all time will will anything ever top it have you noticed while you're thinking of that have you thought of them yet I, I i've got a answer i don't know okay, if it's the throw right it at me. um my favorite song is from my favorite band uh off of my favorite album okay um vampires and blue dresses off of the album dust and retreat from the band margo and the nuclear so-and-sos you mentioned that okay yeah oh fuck i still haven't even listened to them well i remember you, you mentioned leave. them at the, the spiritual yeah. podcast so that we did. before you leave okay. yeah well i'll definitely it's it's like it's really simple stuff um it's not really like anything mind-blowing yeah um but it really resonates with me really powerfully mm-hmm. they they were there like that album specifically was with me through some hard times. Mm-hmm. Um, like it's very personal, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's not like anything like, cr- like super crazy, but uh, yeah. I think that's, at least for now, that's my answer. Okay, sweet. If I could just whip one out, I would say, ooh, Trying to Be Cool by Phoenix mm. from, I think the album is, it's the album with the peach on it, Bankrupt. Or some shit. Have, I would just we have say two like, songs to listen to before. I know, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely top three, top five. I don't know. One of my very top favorite songs of all time. It's so just well done. Uh, it's a good, good like. It's it's dancey. Mm-hmm. I, a lot of the music I listen to is new dancey. To for I, I I love 1975. Yeah. Uh, their shit is so inspiring as far as like. How can you make something danceable but not cheesy in any way? Yeah. Except for their latest album. It's got some some shit in there. (laughs) Yeah, well Um, well said. I think that they fit that bill. Um, It's dancey, but it's not super cheesy. Yeah. Okay. But there have been a lot of... I was talking to to my girlfriend, Emily, about this recently. How, like, there have been a lot of, like, good stuff coming out of 2023 as far as this is the music I listen to. But there's been so many bad yeah. albums that came out this year, 2023. And I could name like five of them. Like Arctic Monkeys. I'm yeah. sorry, but they flopped. Like they just There's only to one album that, that like Yeah. Um AM. No. Oh, which one? Uh, <laughs> 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 um, favorite worst nightmare. Oh shit! The, I, I'm not super hip to their older shit. Oh, dude, I fluorescent that, adolescent. That everyone knows that one. Oh Please yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. Okay, I love that, that album. Is fire. Yeah. Um, but like, and what the hell? I guess do you not keep up with Phoenix much? I'm not familiar. Oh, okay, maybe uh-huh. some of you do. They're from France, but their album they put out this year was also like, what are you guys mm. doing? It seemed like I don't know. I didn't read up on it, but it seemed like they their drummer fucking is gone is it like they went with a new approach like a, it's they, not... they tried to get too like poppy and cheesy and their hooks are aren't even hooks they're like fucking rusty fucking <laughs> paper clips <laughs> but and like uh fucking uh nikki minaj oh there's like a lot of people were like oh nikki what's this what's mm. her album she just put out there's maybe one good song on it but i I don't know why this thing is like flops this year. Maybe it's like um like too much industry involved. Like it seems like it too polished. Like this is what's gonna really bring you guys. <laughs> the kids to the will top. love this. The kids are gonna just some do like their super out of touch this. board meeting. Right? It's like it has no idea what the fuck they're talking about, but they're like, trust me, this is it. Oh my god. But then these oh, that god. stuff that you guys built your fan base on <laughs> that everyone loves you for, fuck that dude. Yeah, this is it. Which I don't know. I feel like some bands can get away with that and be like, oh yeah, let's put out an experimental album. And if mm. it works, it works. You know, like, I don't know. 
But I really like Math Rock. Haken put out a new album this year. Really, oh. really liked it. How do you spell that? H A K E N. Oh, K E N. I'm not, I don't know if I've heard of them. They're like they're really just prog rock. Um, they I love them. They're super cool. You'll have to send me that too. Yeah, yeah. For Maybe sure. Maybe I'll just listen back and I'll do my homework. Yeah. Because I'm going to forget everything. I would love to swap there. music back and forth. That we should yeah, do that. Yeah, we should. I mean, you have my number? Yeah. I have your number. <laughs> <laughs> don't be a stranger. I, don't be a stranger. I'm one phone call away. <laughs> have you ever been betrayed? Ooh. Ooh. Wow. I think. Um, I think I've grown to a certain stage in my life. Uh, ever since I've moved here, uh, where I, I don't take things personally anymore. You know how you kind of do as a child and as you're a teenager and you're trying to figure out how to fucking live and how to react to all the things going on around you. It's like the tendency is to be reactional to everything and like try to take control of everything around you and your own emotions uh everything's a bigger deal when you're a kid yeah so like the moment you asked me that question and up till now i still can't think of a moment where i felt betrayed because i think i just i've just learned to not take shit personally yeah and to um see myself outside of just myself i love that answer yeah and I, but i want to answer it because well, i'm trying to think of i mean like here's the thing is like based on just what you're saying you wouldn't know if you've been betrayed because you don't take anything personally right so even if you have you wouldn't know i think that's beautiful but i'm trying to think of like by the conventional yeah. definition of betrayal um well, how do you define betrayed? Because there could be different ways of like. It's... I think that's part. That's part of this question, also. Mm-hmm. Um, I think betrayal. It can be like romantic. It can be a friendship. It can be business. Mm-hmm. Like someone's just like not upholding their end of a deal. Um, yeah. It can be, dude. I asked Michael this, and he said, "What if I told you I'm the one that betrayed?" And I was like. Oh, well, what if I told you anytime someone betrayed you, you're actually betraying your own self mm. by um, habitually latching on to yeah. this ego that you've yeah. been putting together your whole life? It's the same thing with being offended. It's like someone offended me. And it's like, <laughs> I don't know if someone can offend me because I don't let them. Yeah, you, yeah, we've done enough shrooms to <laughs> to get our pathways figured out and not yeah. not rely on these old. You have to give someone of... permission to offend you. Maybe you have to give someone permission to betray you. Also, mm. I think, uh, huh? I I'm sh- I definitely have been betrayed. Um, I'm trying to think of. I'm trying to just recall my really bad long term memory. <laughs> Me too. We smoke a lot of weed. That's the yeah. problem. Um, I, I we can't remember shit. The blank slate. Yeah. Um, uh, I feel like anytime someone's done something negative towards me, they felt like I deserved it and maybe I did, you know. Um, you were so fucking wholesome. <laughs> you were so fucking wholesome. <laughs> I'm seriously oh my God. trying to like. I'm trying to. I, I'm sure I'll think of something. Uh, no, I love it. It's great. <laughs> uh, um, like, um, I, I can think of an example. Like, if you're like, what do you think of this? Is it like, is it good? And someone doesn't give you their honest opinion, mm. like that's a betrayal. Okay. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. In that in that sense, <laughs> I mean, everyone betrays each other all the time. Sure, because everyone's yeah. so the tendency is to be so avoidant of, you know, oh, I don't want to offend them, unless you're in your head and you don't really care yeah. at the moment. Then we betray each other all the time uh, at the expense yeah. of like, well, I don't, I don't, 
you know, you feel like you're saving someone from immediate pain, but it ends up there's that pain just it happens mm. at some point down the road. Or the like lying. Yeah. Yeah. Um I think anytime anyone feels betrayed, um it, I feel like it's often just a misunderstanding too. Or anytime someone lies, it's yeah, it's a misunderstanding. Like that is that's amazing. It's well, you're right. You're that's a hundred percent true. And anytime anyone, I'll take it a step further. Yeah. Anytime anyone has ever done anything bad, it is because they're hurt. They oh, are, right. They're a sad child. Yeah. That was neglected and hurt people hurt people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've heard that phrase before. It's hard to extend empathy all the way. You know, it's like people give examples of like, Genghis Khan or people I won't even like like the fucking Unabomber that we just read mm. like it's hard to extend your empathy that far to like pure evil but mm. we're, like the way I see it like I had a trip I probably told you about this I had a DMT trip one time and it all, this also just makes sense to me it's like some very Alan Watts type philosophy but like with the checkerboard walls different was... trip oh, different trip okay <laughs> i was shown that we're all the same entity mm. like experiencing itself through different angles yeah um and that also just makes sense to me logically yeah um like without the drug trips um i saw that yeah so it's that same thing <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's an interview <laughs> yeah <laughs> um but like so anytime someone does anything bad it's like well i did that that's a reflection that was me yeah i did that <laughs> like to hate anyone is to hate yourself mm. um, right yeah 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 like if you have hate in your heart like that is only hurting you mm. uh, because there's only you yeah um yeah <laughs> <laughs> dude we are yeah. getting deep okay. um has your heart ever been broken Ooh. well how do you define that <laughs> yeah how do you define that if someone breaks my heart reverse you know um, how do you define it <laughs> so you know if you uh, perform a very interesting surgery where we remove the heart and we put it on the table and grab a hammer and it just shatters like glass like it was <laughs> yeah. yeah it's not mushy at all it's just because it breaks yeah my heart's dry and crumbly <laughs> That's literally the first thing my uh, brain thought of. But um, uh, how do you define getting your heart broken? Um, there's so there's so many ways to answer that. Like I've had breakups where my heart wasn't broken. Yeah. But I had def definitely had my heart's definitely been broken. Yeah. Um, and I know because I experienced it. Yeah. I don't really know how to define it. Mm um but like um like my first serious relationship was like that um where it's something like like fundamentally as a person I'm not the same like for the better actually because yeah. it's like I've evolved since then yeah but um like it it restructured who I am mm -hmm. um it fixed your heart yeah yeah I um so my first like relationship was a like hush hush thing with another boy in my church mm -hmm. when we were kids yeah and we were like like severely religious yeah. so it was like not not something we could talk about yeah. um, to this day we've never he and me and this person have never had a conversation about Whoa. it like yeah like in the midst of it like like things would happen but it we never discussed it it was very like i think it was almost like like it's not gay if we don't talk about it you know what i mean like super silly um sure. but like that that to me like um and then like we were kids and he turned uh 17 or 18 and then it was just like a like a full halt to all that mm. which is that's the part that hurt is yeah. um like this the abruptness of it yeah. plus the fact that we never talked about it mm -hmm. um so it also like um 
like I thought I thought God I thought God was this man in the clouds and I thought he hated gay people so I'm like God hates me uh, right and it also like um that's every religion yeah I also <laughs> I didn't know what my sexuality was so it was like just a very a lot of like I'm just going through a lot at that time mm-hmm. um and then like my very next relationship um was with a girl and um I realized like okay I'm not I'm not gay I'm probably something more like uh what's the one where you're just attracted to people Pansexual. Pan, yeah 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 it's just like I'm attracted to individuals yeah yeah um and like so that's like okay so now I'm even more confused uh and then that like abruptly ends and that like really like I was in a low place before and then that like really um and it's not this person's fault like yeah. things just fell apart mm-hmm. but it that was almost part of there was no betrayal it's no one's fault which does not make it any easier mm-hmm. that things just fall apart that way yeah so like I've definitely I know what it's like I can't really define it mm-hmm. um but it's definitely like a monumental event in your life yeah I think um like like the loss of a parent like if if you're a kid and you have like a parent die when you're young like that's heartbreaking you know mm-hmm. or like an animal or something that's all yeah. that's all heartbreaking stuff yeah um i wonder if when people say the phrase you know like oh that just broke my heart <laughs> when someone when your heart is i broken, like this character i think it's just a lazy way of saying i cried about it so I feel like everyone's so scared of um, being vulnerable. And it's funny that we conventionalize crying as like this sh- vulnerability thing. We like, that, which is just some word to describe, like everyone's so afraid to open up around others when, uh, I don't know, because uh, I've, I, when I first uh, moved here, it was with my ex, my girlfriend at the time, and we broke up in like late 2020 and for, um, it was weird. It's like, there wasn't like a concrete reason other than I just, I, it's like I lost this, the spark, you know? And I felt so guilty for that too. Mm. And like, it's so hard to leave someone after you've been with them for, you know, three, four years at that point. And um, like part of it was my fault in the way that I kind of, I felt like she was becoming distant and thus I was also becoming distant. And so it's like hard to, it's hard to open up with someone even though you're so close with them but about like the one thing that you've dreaded the whole time you know yeah but now with relationships I feel like I I know it's going to come to an end because everything comes to everything comes to an end and when I have that oh yeah it's not like I think about it all the time but I just have this awareness of like um soulmate is just a label getting married is just a label boyfriend girlfriend is just another label i think what we forget to value is the way we learn from each other and uh, build each other up in our relationships yeah and anytime we bring each other down or bring ourselves down helping each other be aware of that and yeah you know and so when i think of uh when I've had my heart broken, it's kind of like, I guess I would say I broke my own heart, but is in an effort to find a way and find someone else to fix my heart with, or like, you know, help someone else. Yeah, no one can do that for you. You know, yeah. yeah. So, uh, I don't know. I, I love I, I feel like I, I have this tendency to want to fix things not mm. as in like I'm the she's same broken I can fix her but in more like the relationship itself yeah yeah I'm the same way right. I will I'm the same way with work too mm-hmm. like I will stay at a job I don't like because I'd much rather do that than like go look for a job 
Oh, right. Even if yeah. it sucks, <laughs> like I, I will get stuck in that trap. Mm-hmm. I do the same shit with relationships where yeah. I'm like, like, no, we can fix this. And it's like, maybe it's like better just like let go. Yeah. It's like, it's so hard to do that, yeah. but it's worth it, you know? It, it, it definitely, yeah, for sure. And like you said, I mean, even if, even if you die together, it still ends. Yeah. Yeah. Um, every relationship comes to an end. Mm-hmm. Man, I, I think, I think, uh, I believe in determinism, like everything that's going to happen is going to happen the way it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. But I also believe in free will. And I don't think they contradict each other. I think they're actually compatible. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like we do have autonomy over what we do, uh, but we were always going to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's as an individual, like you are just a project product of everything you've been through, nothing more, you know? Mm-hmm. I think the soul is a blank slate and like things like astrology, maybe it gets a little more complicated than that, but like the only things that make us unique are like our biology and things we go through in life. Mm. Um, that is who you are is your experience. Yeah. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> yeah. I, I totally agree. Yeah. Um, and I guess, uh, how did we get there? Where did we come from? <laughs> <laughs> Where are we going? <laughs> Cotton <Kind of> like Joe. <laughs> uh, um, we were talking about betrayal, and we were talking about... Uh, oh, I want to go where you're going, but I have one more thing as far yeah. as relationships yeah. that I, I... I haven't told very many people this. Um, only probably the people who are like closest to me. And I I never I don't um, I don't have to go into details. It's just, it's just me, you, and Alice. No, yeah. But I'll, I'll keep <laughs> it's it. It's just kinda, the three of us. I'll keep it vague, basically. Um, I made some poor decisions uh, with an ex partner, not with, but like after we broke up, we were still seeing each other, and but we were like not dating and I like uh, I did whatever the fuck I wanted to do. I was in my fucking emo goth phase all, for a moment and I like slept with this porn star chick and Hell um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to fucking um, not she's, yeah, she's yeah. really sweet and uh, but um my ex had found out about it somehow through Twitter, through the metaverse, somehow picked it up, smelled it in the air. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was frustrating to me. And I f- kind of felt heartbroken and betrayed in a way, even though I was trying to move on and do my own mm-hmm. life, but we were still seeing each other. So we still had that like string of like physical attachment yeah. and emotional. Uh, but her reaction was to come to my house unannounced when I wasn't home and uh, grab one of these art pieces that we made together off the wall and break it and rip it in half and throw it on the bed. And she flushed about three ounces of my fucking weed. Unforgivable. Down my toilet. Completely unforgivable. And I came home to that shit. Like, that's the most pissed off and angry I've ever been towards someone before. Like, I, I, do, I do regret. Um, I just loosened up your <laughs> I just no knocked this drawer out. The <laughs> handle off, my bad. So basically, I couldn't handle it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I mean, the most I did was just yell at her on the phone and be like, why the fuck did you do this? So, in that's my answer to feeling betrayed because um but um i forgave her i yeah i i uh, feel like it's always good to be forgiving of others and yourself oh, sure. and yeah. i the more i understood like why like the more i put myself in her shoes you know the more i realized like okay yeah i, I guess i did deserve that but that was 400 dollars of my fucking money 
you know, where I'm like, okay, and if you didn't hard, have that's to do that, like, yeah, like she did react extremely. Uh, I think that qualifies yelling that. at someone. I know, right? I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not, whatever, I'm not justifying anything, but like, but I was, I was angry. Yeah. I'm, I've never angry. I have, ever. I have done what you're talking times. about yeah. several times. Yeah, like where I've said some really hateful things to people that I love. Mm. Um, I have this like. I have a mean streak in me and it yeah. it's not it's it's for people close to me and mm-hmm. I this is something I really don't like about myself yeah. and I've, I'm aware of it so I I like try I'm very conscious about it like yeah. try not to go there mm-hmm. but I have like in the past um just unloaded on people that didn't didn't deserve it mm-hmm. um it's embarrassing yeah but I think we all have had these moments and it's like it's hard to talk about because it's deep unless yeah. you know someone really well and you're having a conversation like this. You know? I'm trying to get more people to do that. Yeah, um, to open up. Because because <laughs> not a lot of people do this and I think it's really important. Yeah. Um, Not to like, I don't have like delusions of grandeur or anything, but like in a small way, this is very important stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, Because, yeah, like... <laughs> Like we're friends, we've known each other a little while, but we don't know each other like super well. But we're having a very like serious personal conversation, yeah. and like you can do this with anybody for real. You can yeah. do this, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like like everyone's just like a phone call away or a message away, you know? Yeah, and we're um, all just scratching at the surface of each mm-hmm. other, trying to discover like what makes you you. Yeah, and I love you're so interesting. I love like joining your podcast, but I love just being your friend too. Dude, it's like, um, I feel the same way. I yeah. love surrounding myself with people who help open me up and who are also like, just like free, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, free, that's it. Freedom. Cause we don't tell people things because we're afraid and it's not even sh- clear what we're afraid of. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, uh, like a few years ago, I just, I just made it a habit of like saying things that scared me, mm-hmm. like make it going out of my way. To like say things that scared me and Whoa. it's so freeing like what what's an example um like talking about sexuality or yeah. like um like because again like i come from a strict religious background so that's just like beat into me you mm-hmm. know so like overcoming that like that's not something i've like struggled with for a long time now yeah but uh but at you know when i was like 18 19 like that's like a hard thing to when, when you when you come from a strict religious background, I'm sure you can relate a little bit. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yep. Mormonism. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but like, uh, what else? Like my flaws, like that thing, like, um, like this told you about, like, I, I have this ability to really cut people with my words. Um, mm. I don't know why exactly, but I'm aware that I have this ability and other people don't really have this power over me. Mm-hmm. It's really hard to like, like upset me with words. Mm-hmm. Um, but for some reason, I'm really good at doing that to other people. And um, it's, it's not a good thing. It's, it's, I, I, I'm scared of it. Um, mm-hmm. I'm scared that I'll hurt the people close to me mm-hmm. because I'll get mad and just, unload demons on them that they didn't deserve Mm -hmm. um because i've done it before like (laughs) it's been a while and i'm conscious of it like i'd go out of my way not to do this um not every thought you okay so like we should be honest with each other but like you got to be honest with yourself too like Mm -hmm. if you're in an emotional state maybe take a minute before you like go confront someone about something Mm -hmm. like that's something i'm having to do too is like because i'm like the kind of person it's like i want to resolve it like like come over immediately let's talk i don't want to have to like think about it let's just solve this immediately Mm -hmm. but sometimes you need a minute to just chill yeah like and think about things on your own before you make like rash decisions about things oh yeah actually the art of war we did that for the book club too oh i need to read that one Uh, you can borrow it uh somewhere i'll get it for you later guitarist has that same book too art of war is brilliant um definitely the oldest book we've read on the book club Mm. um and it it's great because you can apply it to anything mm-hmm. like he's taught some of it is like he's like don't march an army through the rain like it's very practical like 
Mm. He's just talking about warfare. But then there's other stuff that's like you can apply it to all aspects of life, um, like relationships, business. Um, But um, yeah, but that actually kind of helped me like, okay, be tactful. Mm. Like I'm not a tactful person. I'm a very like, I'm a very driven person. Yeah, It's like, I'm going to go do the thing, but I don't know, necessarily know how to do it. Mm. Like instead of walking around the wall, I might just like ram against it until it breaks. You know? <laughs> <Shit>. uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. What's your, what's your birthday? Uh, January 27th. 99. Is that Aquarius? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, what's your I'm an Aries. Aries? Uh, Aries is very stubborn. It's a goat. I don't know what month that is. Is it? It's it's a goat. Oh, April 4th is my birthday. April 4th? Okay. Oh, that's right. April the 4th be with you. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that shit? Aren't you, uh, are you still having that show on your birthday? At the East Room? I am. Uh, Did not you hit up Room. Taylor yet? Oh, okay. Not at East Room. Okay. We're doing an underdog. Okay, um, sweet. That's even yeah. closer to me. Yeah. It's gonna be sick. How many bands do you have? Seven. Oh gee. <laughs> yeah, start at like six. It's so funny. I haven't announced this yet, but that's okay. Uh yeah, I'm, I'm doing a festival. Oh, okay. Should uh, it should it still be undisclosed relatively? It, I don't give a fuck. Uh, I'm having a um uh, a festival on my birthday. Um we're calling it Bunny Roo. Bunny Roo? <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> It's going to be an underdog. Um, it's actually the day after my birthday. Uh, I'm working with uh, Michael Carter from Sky. It's a Sky Daddy event. Oh, sweet. Um, he's helping me put it together. He's booking all the bands. Okay. okay. Yeah. Sick. And um, I mean, I'm, I'm helping here and there, but like, I don't know anything about booking an event or like mm. hosting a show. This is completely new territory for me. Yeah. It's a whole organization. So I'm, email process. I'm happy to just kind of like pass that along, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, but um where was i birthdays yeah it's gonna be oh yeah because my that's what it was uh we're doing it on um the fifth instead of the fourth because okay. because my birthday is gonna be on a thursday uh, and he was like yeah just don't do it that day do it do it on the weekend sometime i'm like yeah. that makes sense fair enough yeah yeah Sweet. so um yeah very excited about that april um, the fifth be with you yeah <laughs> Some of the bands are tenuous, so I won't. I'll, we can talk about it later, but okay, yeah. uh, I won't announce the lineup yet. Yeah. But um, I'm very excited about that. Um, yeah. Planning on making it a, a yearly occurrence. So. Hell yeah, bunny. Yeah. Maybe Roo? East Room in the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, bunny, Roo. bunny Roo. Bunny Roo. That's you know, right. like uh, it's not not associated with any other festival. Yep. <laughs> Don't sue us <laughs> or do because no that's one... clout. No like, one would <laughs> sue you for that. What are you talking yeah. about? I hope they do actually. That'd be so much class. So, yeah, I got sued by Bonnaroo because they like <laughs> they like give a fuck or something. They would sue you. I mean, who? the same logo. I bet. Oh, you true. Know, like, yeah. Yeah. Maybe stay, stay away from that. Of anything. They're you know uh, parody laws that will protect you. But... Oh, I can't take credit for that either. Um, Bunny Roo was a. Uh, um, Cordy Nicole came up with that. Uh, Cordy was about to sue. You. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so she's the reason I'll get sued. She came up with Bunny Room. Blame her. Sue, sue Cordy. Don't sue me. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I'm excited about that. Why um, not Bunny Palooza? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you should really change it. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, fuck. Man. Uh, so how did you get, how did we get to birthdays and then that? Oh, um, I was talking about how um, I'm very driven, but I'm not very tactful. And I'm just Oh, like, you're trying to think of the sign. Yeah, and you're, yeah, yeah you're, you said you were like that too. That's why yeah, I was very what your driven birthday was. and try to be tactful too. I feel like, uh, I don't know, I did, I my head, you know? <laughs> yeah. 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 I like. My approach is usually like just ask people things directly. Yeah. It's like um like anytime I've asked a girl out, is just like, hey, do you want to go out? Like, can I can I just I mean just like ask that. Yeah. Like it's like that people would be, you know, if you haven't tried it, you'd be really surprised like what you can get from just like asking for things. Oh yeah. 
I think um, the best questions are the ones that are finally asked. Like we hold back so much. Yeah. I learned a lot from uh, Amanda Palmer, the, the Art of Asking. Oh, shit. Um, I need to check that out. Yeah, she was in a band called Dresden Dolls. Um, but yeah, I learned a lot about that from her. She's like, just ask people for things. Yeah. <laughs> so you'd be really fucking surprised what people will just do for you. Yeah. Um, and it's not manipulative because we all, we're social creatures. We all need to help each other. Mm-hmm. Um, like, don't be afraid to not only ask people for things, but like offer people things, like offer people help. Because mm-hmm. um, they might be too scared to ask for it. Yeah. It's funny. Anytime I help someone, my tendency is to be like, can I, can I help you with that? And it's interesting how often people say, no, I got it. It's all good. Yeah. You know, you ever notice that? No one wants to be a burden on anyone else. Right. Even when asked. I've been so like concerned about that when like, I, I always try to be as helpful as possible yeah. all the time. And um, like, I don't know if it's the, the like, the way I've done construction my whole life and maintenance and I, I, I find this um, this joy in fixing things and making them better. And like right now I'm cleaning houses. I clean, I do chores for people every day, basically, yeah. you know, I'm cleaning their, their toilets and their showers and kitchens and floors and everything. But it's enjoyable in the way that I love having a result of like, mm-hmm. I brought like, I brought them back to this environment that they've been in this whole time that finally feels like like, like peaceful, you know? Yeah. And uh, I love being able to provide that. I think with part of the reason I love doing music too is like, like it's, it brings peace. It helps center ourselves to just yeah. listen. And I feel like asking is, is kind of similar to like, it's, um, I think the best thing you can ever do at any point in time is ask and not ask for things, but just to ask questions. Anytime you're meeting someone, whether it's like a first date you're on with with a romantic interest or or just a friend or just a person you're trying to get to know, like the more questions you ask, the more answers you get. Yeah. And like there's so much uncertainty when you just stay silent and but there's also it's the mystery of life is fun too (laughs) have you ever done any um like spirit work like with a ouija board or anything like that or like a mirror dark crystals stuff like that i never have actually so um i'm a big believer in like spirits like the spirit world and um, I think the more you learn about that, the more you realize you're just talking about psychology. Mm-hmm. Like all of these things can be explained in non-magical terms. Right. Um, yeah. Like Freud and Jung really paved the way for that. They turned these mystical concepts into a science. Mm-hmm. Um, and patterns of behavior. Yeah. 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 So when I talk about spirits, these are thought forms that may just exist in my mind, but I don't that doesn't really mean anything because mm-hmm. um, what real difference is there between what's taking place in your mind or like another realm? Mm. Like oh, it's, another realm. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. Like, like, like either another dimension you mean? Yeah. 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 Like, like either way, it's the same shit. Like mm-hmm. maybe imagine like you could just very e- like semantically, you could just very easily say imagination is a place. Mm. Like if you conceptualize imagination as just another place and you never come up with shit, you just pull things from somewhere mm. um like the plane of yeah another plane of that, existence. that may or may not be true but at least conceptually we can imagine that mm, you can picture it yeah as a place yeah where you are also existing in yeah yeah so like to talk about spirits is the same thing as talking about just like your your personal demons like mm. things inside of you and um all that to say, like, I, I worship the concept of um, what could be summarized as Lucifer or Prometheus. Um, to me, they're the same entity. Because 
one's giving an apple. You're familiar with Prometheus, the Greek story? Um, so, I don't know if I am, yeah. actually. Yeah, no worries. So Prometheus is, uh, it's Greek mythology. He, he was a Titan, um, which the Titans made the gods. Mm -hmm. And then Zeus, who is like the, the father of the gods, but still made by the Titans, um, he makes a deal with Prometheus. It's like, hey, help me kill the Titans. So Prometheus usurps his fellow Titans by siding with the god who is beneath them. Mm. Um, and then as after that, after they overthrow all the Titans and like Zeus is like the god of the realm now, um, Prometheus gives human beings a torch and teaches them how to make fire, which was Zeus is like, that's strictly off limits. You can't do that. But he did it anyway. And Zeus is like, oh, I see what you're doing. You helped me overthrow them. Now you're helping them overthrow me. Mm -hmm. And so he chains him to a rock and he's tormented for all eternity. But this is the same story as the serpent in the garden. Uh, oh, okay. Giving knowledge to human beings um, mm -hmm. is, a, is a divine betrayal. Mm -hmm. And that's how it's characterized. But I worship that concept. People have a right to know whatever they want to know, even if they will do harm with it, even if they'll do hurt themselves or others with it. That is people's problem and people's mistake to make. It's not anyone's choice to make that decision for us. Hmm. Um, I, so I, I worship knowledge to the absolute extreme, even if it'll end up destroying us all. That's our story. That's our decision to make. Huh. Um, <laughs> so Dude, I I know nothing about the Greek mythology and so every single thing you said in there I was like wait this guy <laughs> did what and then he did what and okay gods okay okay yeah <laughs> so the gods gods were made by this thing called titans well you uh, don't have to weird. explain it to me because I'm gonna oh, forget yeah it yeah now. okay no worries and another thing is that's this story of its own that who came up with some Greeks some Greeks yeah okay um yeah it's all stories. Had a euro I fucking love you <laughs> you you mean a gyro a gyro yeah euro however you pronounce it yeah but all, all of that to say I um <laughs> I I worship this concept of um to me it's like a holy trinity you have like the father who brings the knowledge you Zeus. Have... <laughs> I'm just kidding <laughs> like you have like teacher yeah and student and the knowledge itself. So it's like a holy trinity. Which one's this? Is, does, is it synonymous with the spirit and the... the I mean, you could or, call it that, yeah. Because, like, like, a lot of religions, are they're trying to talk about the same thing with yeah. these ancient Aztecs and yeah. shit, you know? Uh, um, well, the holy trinity... Are there any the, overlaps between... The Catholic holy trinity is um, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And... Um, so that like is the Mormonism. Yeah, is the Latter Day Saints. That they, they call it. Do they call it the mystery of the Trinity? Where you're I, from? I don't think they call it. That. So Trinitarians and Catholics call it the mystery of the Trinity, and they're like, God is God. God is also Jesus, and God's the Holy Spirit. We don't know how it works, and it's like, it's so to me, it's like it's so simple. Like, but they don't know what they're talking about. Like, they when they say it, they're like, it's the mystery of the Trinity. But like what Jesus was saying is exactly what we've been talking about, about like, hey, guys, I just figured out like I'm God and so are you. Mm. So like father is like creator. Like we're like the nirvana that we all our souls came from. And then like son is every living person. Like mm. just Jesus, Jesus wasn't really saying he was special. He was just saying like, I'm awake. I'm aware that we are all God. Mm -hmm. Be like me. Treat other people the way you want to be treated. Because yeah. guess what? That is you. Mm -hmm. um, and like people have gotten the message so construed and they just don't know what they're talking about. Yeah, because the word God itself is just kind of distracting. Because a lot of yeah. people think of God as they personify their paintings of him, apparently as a dick, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I feel like I try to view things when speaking full philosophically as okay well father well i think 
father slash mother is like mm. a better you know term or do you, you know do you know the band maiden mother crone um yeah they're from I here played with them in clarksville like I, a few weeks ago with those, oh really weird sisters. Dude. yeah oh those shit wait show. spirit ritual weird sisters and maiden mother crone yeah oh my mother god was a duo it was oh, just okay. them. They didn't have their full band. I wonder if someone gotcha. got sick or something. But... Oh, they're they're like a five piece. They were yeah. still incredible. Okay, like, she, she has an amazing voice. That might be Black Moon Mother. You're yeah. right. Okay, no worries. That wrong, yeah, wrong Made Mother Crone's word. another band, but Black Moon Mother also badass. Okay. They're yeah, they're sorry. way they're awesome. Thank you for too. realizing that because yeah. I. I confused those two. No worries. I've literally done the same thing. So maybe I've done that before, before too. Didn't they play at? Is it was it Far Out Fest or was it uh, Couch Fest? They played I don't at know. one of those. Probably they play out here a lot. Um, yeah. But oh, uh, when I interviewed them, they were telling me about how Maiden Mother Crone is a holy trinity. Oh like, shit! Like the maiden is the like the young woman. Yeah. And then the mother is like the mother, and then the crone is like the old lady. And then it's like they were telling me about this Shit. pagan trinity. And I'm like, that's fucking awesome. Oh, uh, I love that. So it's like like you're saying, like the, what is a crone? Crone is like um I've never heard the word crone <laughs> being spoken before. Crone is like a hag. It's a not hag. it's a, yeah, crone can be not respectful. Oh. I think the way they're using it's respectful, but like I okay. think in modern usage. Mm-hmm. It's usually depicting like um like an old witch or huh. um that's a crone mm-hmm. or like old wise woman. Yeah. Um it can definitely be like negative, like too. But uh um but yeah, like that's that's its own holy trinity. Yeah. Um that's really cool. Yeah. Um yeah, I it's it's funny how we um tie such a strong uh like when when you think of a triangle, it's, it's like the most supportive mm. of of uh, any shape in like s- structures. Yeah, I see what you mean. You know what I mean? Um, like bridges of tons of triangles in it because it's like somehow it works the best. And like when uh, twos and threes and fours are fun. I, anytime I think of numbers when it comes to music, it just makes it so much more fun. And like, mm. oh, let's do this in five four. Numbers are a crazy magic of its own. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just different versions of different patterns, mm-hmm. you know, when it's applied to music, you know. Speaking of the Greeks, they they were like huge mathematicians and they thought oh, it was yeah. all based around like geometry is like the core mm-hmm. of math. Yeah. So like one is not a number because it's not a shape. Ah, also, yeah. like they were debating, it's crazy. They were in like some theoretical wild shit way ahead of like a lot of... <laughs> Like, we like to think we're so smart because we live with technology, but, like, I don't know how to make this. I don't know how to make a computer. Yeah. Like, I didn't do that. Someone else did that. Like, we're not, I'm not smart just because they did that. Yeah, my fellow humans helped put together this. But, like, in a lot of ways, we're a lot dumber than people before us. Like, when you got nothing bad, like, like, if Greeks had TikTok, they wouldn't have come up with advanced mathematics. They wouldn't have, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, I guess it took advanced mathematics to get to where we are yeah, now. Yeah, but now it's making us dumber. Like, <laughs> like, now we're just, instead of, like, solving world problems, we're just, like, on TikTok. Or, Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but they, they, they were even, like, conceptualizing whether two was a number or not. Because a line wow. is not a shape. It's just, yeah, it's all about geometry. They were they were crazy about it. Yeah. Um, but that's where like like all of our math comes from too. Yeah, I mean not all of it. Like there's Eastern mathematics too. But mm-hmm. yeah, Good. wild shit. What are you most afraid of? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get better about like. So next question. <laughs> Like no one needs to say that. Just no, like, I love how we them. like we go off of each thing and fly away, and then you're like, nah. hey, yeah, <laughs> yeah, back to the flashlight. I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get more into doing that. Uh, what was it? What's my biggest fear? <laughs> yeah, what are you most afraid of? Ooh, um, what am I most afraid of? I think the older we get, the more capable we are of like realizing that fearing something is 
like it, worrying about something is kind of like very counterproductive mm. you know yeah we kind of unlearn that the older we get that was the first thing i thought of when you said that because um i don't know i i used to be I used to have arachnophobia because I got, got bit by a black widow when I was like four or five and I got really sick from it. I don't remember it, but it was like ingrained in my body. You know, anytime I would see a spider, I'm like, oh, you know, it's that assimilation. But I moved here and did pest control. And I was trapped in crawl spaces for like hours on end and just kind of got used to being around spiders eventually mm. and kind of overcame my fear though. now I can like because I've been in a crawl space and stared like fucking eye to all eight I have a million eyes on this spider I was like five, you know four feet away from me fucking huge mm. and I'm like tr- it, crawl space is like this tall so I'm crawling like uh, that was freaky as fuck though but after overcoming those like experiences i'm just like okay i'm still fine yeah fear is really um really no, okay with spiders but um, um it, there's also yeah. something to be said about manifesting like if you're afraid mm. of something like it's more likely to happen right yeah like ah i think people do that all the it's time we're so like, powerful, dude. oh i'm gonna fail this interview our mind they, is they focus so, so hard on that yeah <laughs> and they it's, fail it it's because get the job. Our mind is so powerful that like we don't realize how much we affect our surroundings, oh, like yeah. on a, on just like a day to day basis. So like our negative emotions also affect our life around us. They affect yeah. people around us. And like if you stay in a negative place, you will you'll end up in hell. Mm. Like your world will be worse. Yeah, but also in a way, um, the way we react to the world makes it's like we're making ourselves worse by you know uh i guess by losing ourselves you know in our own heads you know mm. by not being connected yeah and you know you mentioned tiktok earlier like being so connected to your to this device it's like you just there's this addiction to distraction you know that's what um that that book we were just looking at, the Unabomber Manifesto. Yeah. That was his whole thing, uh, is industrial society and its future. Um, I'm not trying to plug this. This guy was crazy. <laughs> but he, like, basically he was saying that is, like, technology. He talks about the power process and, like, how everyone's depressed because no one has any, like, serious goals. Mm-hmm. No one is... Um, like you're not bored when you're trying to find food to eat like to survive you're not there's there's no room to be bored like you're not searching for meaning because your meaning is like surviving day to day and like hopefully like propagating your genes yeah in like Um, a hunter gatherer setting yeah Yeah. um and he just talks about how like instead of fixing the problem that we're all depressed and anxious uh we just medicate it instead (laughs) and it's like yeah he's kind of hard to argue with yeah. um but he's Guess like points, you know? yeah if you don't know he he killed a bunch of people over the course of like two decades like he was ma- mailing bombs to people and he hurt, he hurt a lot of people damn but that was his thing is he's like we just need to as a people reject technology and return to he was what what's called anarchist prim primitive uh-huh. anar- anarcho prim yeah um where just completely reject technology and government just uh grow potatoes that would be so hard to do to it's fucking, impossible yeah right yeah because life's uh, often yeah kind of too easy like, he, that, you don't have very many problems yeah you know, anything's really a first world problem where it's like oh no i don't have wi-fi you know it's like we were talking about with restrictions and art like yeah. we thrive under pressure mm-hmm. well, and there's no pressure we just yeah there's <laughs> also there's also like he talks about eugenics and i'm like no but also the problem he's pointing out is true he like gives an example of like diet diabetes and it's like if you have like type 2 diabetes like that's that can be passed down mm. so it's like back in the day 
you would have just died and oh, shit. you wouldn't be passing on those genes. Like I have really yeah. bad eyesight and my parents have bad eyesight. Oh, if shit. I have kids, they're going to have shitty eyesight, <laughs> which is fine because we yeah. live in the technology. <laughs> yeah. But if we didn't, we wouldn't have these problems. Right. And so like the problem with that is like, yes, that is true. However, any idea you can have to deal with that is a bad idea mm. like there's only dark places to go with that yeah uh, <laughs> like basically you're just saying like okay you can't have kids or just kill people with birth defects like we can't do that uh, so like yeah. there's nowhere you can go that's the problem with that is you can, there's nowhere you can, positive you can go with that mm. so does that kind of suggest how you know we're constantly evolving but with technology making we have so many great tools to make things easier for us and a lot of it's working really well a lot of it it's at the expense of like our environment around Mm -hmm. us like a lot of people don't realize how symbiotic we have to be with plants in order to continue thriving as we continue to populate the earth you know and the way it's affecting our climate too with climate change uh global warming and shit it's like, well, how do you get out of it? How do we not do this? We have to, you know, we're at this level where, um, you know, it's interesting considering like, okay, we're, you know, really technologically advanced. Imagine how far along we'll be in 500 years, you know, or imagine if it, it could end at any moment with how yeah. much nuclear, like, fucking bullshit could happen at the well, the you fact know. is, humanity will be wiped out mm-hmm. if we don't leave the planet. Right, it will right. eventually happen. Yeah, what I, I, is that's a uh, there's a name for that. Um, but yeah, like I wonder if any uh, species anywhere on any planet always has to go through that. Oh yeah, they can't stay in you one know? place. You, when you're at a certain level of population, we continue fucking yeah. and like everything's exponential at a certain point when you zoom out from yeah. them and like yeah a meteor could hit us kill yeah, every, there's everyone there's always that possibility yeah <laughs> very humbly yeah <laughs> like if we don't get off off the planet like all of us are gonna die yeah eventually um <laughs> i heard of of all people i would have never expected this but uh, i was watching a podcast with jeff bezos Mm-hmm. and bezos was talking about how he wants to build a space station like that's not in orbit but like just in space uh-huh. um and like he was like people will just live in the space station and you can like vacation to earth that way oh, we can shit. still like we can be as fucking toxic as we want like pollutions and shit but we're not affecting planets like mm-hmm. like the earth is still okay and it's like it could be like a park going going to visit oh, right. a park. oh my god and i'm like actually that makes a lot of sense i'm sure there are realities out in the universe where that is happening and yeah like um you know oh yeah uncle whatever's name lives on the other planet in our solar system you know but you know it's it's crazy to think about you know? yeah <laughs> it's wild <laughs> I think the edibles kicked in. <laughs> I think they did a while ago. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm sure, yeah. What is the meaning of life, Jeff? Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> fuck, oh, dude. Back. Oh, you're making me think again. <laughs> I have to think again. Oh. Um... I don't know either. That's a good question. Yeah. I guess that's the question to figure out throughout your whole life. You know, how do you define? Is that the point? I figure it out. Figure out what the point point is. In evolution, where we can reflect on ourselves and communicate with each other and ponder these things. What is the meaning of it? As we're asking these questions, it's it's kind of redundant to be like, what is the meaning of life? Because I think that like life is so uh mysterious and playful and we're on this ride and like we only we're only ever experiencing it in the way that we're living but 
like life is synonymous with death you know as yeah. like a crest is you never have one without a trough you know and that's that i feel like that's its own little journey we're all on our own little journey yeah. you know and we are all just different lenses through which life is experiencing mm-hmm. itself you know and so i I feel like that could be a good answer to that. Yeah. What's the meaning like to, of life? To well, live and learn. To discover what what it is. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Fuck so, around and find out. Yeah. <laughs> find around and fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> when you were on last time, did I ask you if you had any ghost stories? Um, I think I went around and asked everyone, but do you? Do you do you have any experiences that you can't rationalize? Um, where you're like i don't I know what the I, fuck happened yeah i think in that pro- podcast i re- i kind of rephrased the, we all kind of seem to kind of rephrase what we interpreted as is you know experiencing or seeing or mm. you know anything spiritual seeing spirits because yeah. you can psychedelics count too okay but as far as like ghosts like i've, I've actually yeah. never seen well yeah i've never seen so like i've i've done a lot uh, like i said i'm a big believer and i've yeah i've interacted with a lot of spirits um i've done ritual magic and stuff like that but i have never seen like something levitate or Um, like like i i think anything is possible outside of like the laws of physics Mm-hmm. like physics are absolute oh, yeah. even if we don't understand what they are they're all, like even if we don't know how it works it works a certain way mm-hmm. we just haven't figured it out yet like that's kind of like the engineering scientific perspective is that we don't know what's going on but there is a way that things are going on you know mm-hmm. um and i i i think there are hard and fast rules like you can't shoot fire out of your hands. You can't levitate. I don't think we'll be able to do that. Mm-hmm. But like outside of like the laws of physics, I think the sky's the limit. Like, um, so all that to say, like, I've, I've had a lot of interactions with spirit, but I've never seen like poltergeist activity. Oh, yeah. Um, and I think a lot of the stuff I'm talking about could just be explained as a hallucination mm-hmm. or um, yeah, yeah, something like that. Just your mind yeah. playing tricks on you. Yeah, well, um, it kind of makes me think um, how I wonder if the way that we kind of in conversation we describe like um, that kind of context with, you know, when it's kind of a pretty common phrase. Uh, when people like refer to their demons Mm. you know yeah Yeah, i feel like that's just another way of personifying just a an emotional experience that you're trying to understand and get used to um sure yeah yeah um uh there's always obviously a case in which someone like has had a lot of sleep and they're, they're like oh my god I just saw like a fucking ghost like my, my house is haunted or whatever yeah but I know a lot of people have seen shit like that and yeah actually we're in a good place and like we're just like, like it's, it's so interesting happened. it's like yeah like there's so much to life that is so unanswerable and like unfathomable you know and yeah part of my love for psychedelics is that it's just self-discovery you know yeah and like how you know how far can we go to experience like anything that shapes reality in a different way it's where you're like wait i just did i just shift myself (laughs) you know yeah but um, yeah, I, as far as like, well, you've done DMT a lot more than I have. I did it zero times. Oh, so well, that's slightly you probably more, yeah. in the sense of like 
having a truly spiritual mystic that's about as, as close as you can get you're like you're a couple of shelves above me you know eh, it's not a competition <laughs> <laughs> no as far as like just experience you know, i yeah i mean i've like, done it several times yeah. i used to be uh, uh how do i say that um a drug I've been, addict. I've been very, very closely, <laughs> very closely connected to like large quantities of it. Yeah. Um. So we used to do it a lot. Sure. <laughs> like. <laughs> um. And yeah, I've, I've. That's about as like. It's like you want to see some shit. Like you want to have a spiritual experience. There's like a fucking cheat code to do it. Mm. Um. It's so, like that's yeah. a. That's that's about as far as you can fucking go. Yeah. Because you literally like I think I am convinced you go somewhere. Mm-hmm. Like I've had a lot of people say that. Huh? Yeah. It's crazy. Like uh, like I have a friend that's like like staunchly atheist. He's like one of my best friends. Mm-hmm. But like I talked him into doing TMT because he was like that. I'm like I I want to know what you think about this. Uh-huh. Um. And he did it, and he was like up. So like I gave him a few minutes, but then like after like an hour or so, I was like, so what do you think about all that? And he was like, the experience, like, I definitely felt like I went somewhere and communicated with something. Mm -hmm. He's like, but logically, I know that was a hallucination in my mind. And he's like, but he's like, but I can't deny that it definitely felt that way. There's like no denying that. And I'm like, okay. I mean, so it didn't like change his mind about it, but uh, he's he's like it definitely feels that way. Yeah. Um, and I don't yeah. know. Maybe maybe it's not. I think the quest, like when people think about, is this all in your head, or are you communicating with something? It's the wrong question. I think it's yes and no. Like, yeah, I was saying that recently. Yeah. You can answer anything with yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's like maybe maybe they're we're looking at it the wrong way maybe it's not inside or outside of us maybe that is the same thing yeah yeah (laughs) yeah absolutely that's you know i i love that because like alan watts touches on that Mm -hmm. shit yeah uh, like um yeah well you know like one of the lyrics in uh, a new spiritual song called oh my goddess is there's never a yang without a yin you know if you think about any literally anything like this cup was well, it full or is, is it half full or is it half empty it's it's fucking both if it's in the middle like, yeah one is never like ex- you know exclusive yeah. of the other in any case you the know? yin and yang is a great example of that yeah um everything works in harmony with itself and yeah. it can't work any other way mm-hmm. it's I an illusion that. of two but it's actually one yeah yeah, yeah. yeah it's crazy because you know uh when when we uh when a, a male and a female have a child mm. that's just another uh, version of yes mitosis or whatever the fuck it's called <sighs> you're whatever so right the cell splitting thing vibe is whatever one becomes two but they're like the same the whole time yeah because two became yeah. one to become two again and they were one before they became two and now they're one again and now they're two again yeah. and now... it's just another pattern it's yeah. another yes no yes no light dark light dark. binary sound non-sound sound yeah. non-sound that's what a wave is that's what sound is you know it's every amazing. everything is like this yeah like oh you, go ahead you know what i thought recently what? too like um because you know you can anything can be described in a wave yeah right? but at, at a different angle is it a spiral do you know what i mean oh from a, oh literally from another angle if when you see this linearly and you turn it on its side, it's doing this. Yeah. You know, isn't that fucking crazy? When you, about? <laughs> you know, a DNA strand, like the way it, yeah. like, okay. When you yeah. look at it top down, mm-hmm. it's like a flower. It's like, it's oh, like yeah. this complex <laughs> pattern. It's mandala. exactly like you're saying. Yes. It's a mandala. Yeah. yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> okay. Okay. More on that. Right. So it's like. The edibles are fully kicked in. <laughs> as you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having so much fun uh okay so like life is a breathing in and like a breathing out and like the universe started with like 
a pin prick and then it expand it out. Yeah. And eventually it's gonna come back in mm-hmm. and then it's gonna like expand out. Game? Yes, yes, <laughs> everything. Like solar system. Everything in the do. universe is this. Yeah. And uh that's that with the like the mother and the, the father, that's fucking like you're apart yeah. and you're coming together. <laughs> like yeah. everything is it like like we're constantly like there's there's uh together and then you're like like there's separation and you're like oh i miss that person and it's like you come back together and it's like like oh it's good to see you yeah and it's like there's uh everything in life is like this mm-hmm. um it, yeah it just it's, it's one it's thing cutting itself in two and then coming back again and coming like part, parting ways and then like, coming back again yeah exactly <laughs> and it's a wave it's mm-hmm. a it's a spiral it's yeah. all of that and it's crazy the thought of perspective when you zoom in super fucking far on anything and you you get to a point where like ooh here's a little uh, nucleus with protons and neutrons and electrons surrounding it but you zoom out super far and you're like oh here's a sun and some electrons yep. surrounding it solar system here we are it's like <laughs> Yeah, and then the concept of space. You know, what's what defines this room, the space between the walls. You know, mm. what defines uh, the way we are floating in space on this planet in complete space, like yeah, nothingness. You know, our pupils are black because they're completely absorbent. You know, like if you think of our our mind as a blank slate you know a space you know these are fun concepts to explore yeah. not only as a stoner but as just a human you know <laughs> yeah seeing the patterns and everything you yeah. know yeah and every religion is basically saying that to some extent yeah. it's like saying the same shit right. and you know like um in the bible the tower of babel like there's nimrod and he's building a tower yeah, like I remember the story, the the context of it, mm-hmm. but I I'm gonna have to be reminded of the yeah, of the, no worries. Like, whatever the fuck else went on. This is in Genesis, I think. Okay, yeah. Um, Genesis. No. <laughs> Genesia. Genesia. Uh, <laughs> man is like building this tower, and like a man. They're all working man. on it. They're all like collaborating and they're like building this huge thing. And uh, in the story, like the idea is if we build it tall enough, we can get to heaven. Oh, right. Right. And God's like, there's a scripture where it says if if man is left to their own devices, they can do anything. And that's like a pretty bold statement to their own devices. You can look up anything. <laughs> oh, to their own. De- I get it. I get it. I see what you did there. Yeah. Um, so if man is yeah. left to TikTok, they can do anything. So in that story, yeah. it's describing heaven as this place that's it's, above. Yeah. But like, yeah. none of that shit's supposed to be taken literally. Right. Like, it's a yeah. metaphor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and like, like Adam and Eve is a metaphor, but, mm. um, but like fruit. <laughs> we're so stoked that's symbolic dude what if weed is the fruit (laughs) (laughs) what if dmt is what if psychedelics are the root of all this um oh but they're they're all building this tower and god's like if i let them build it they will get to heaven Mm. so he splits their languages up like they're all speaking one language and he divides their languages Mm. This is what's happening today with religion. Oh. Is people think they're speaking the different languages, but they're all speaking the same language. They don't. Mm. They all have the same idea, but they're speaking different languages. Is what I mean to oh, say. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And they, they're convinced that they have a different idea, so they're not willing to like admit that. Mm. You know. Okay. Like, um, like there's a debate like going on in america about like what gender is and that's like pe- we're speaking different languages right like, like we're literally speaking a different word we're like, gender on its own yeah it's very 
very rigid. Or like the like um, abortion argument. Some people are arguing this is a life, and some people are arguing no, it isn't. So it's like you're literally like they're both speaking English, but they're speaking completely different languages, yeah. and so they can never. That it's debate just, will never be settled. It's just another misunderstanding yeah. between people who haven't experienced things that they shouldn't be making laws about. Yeah. Like if <laughs> if people can't speak like uh if people can't speak the same language, that will never be resolved. Mm-hmm. If they can't decide on a definition, then people we'll just translate. Get... <laughs> <I'm just kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> Think of that, people. Uh, ever think of that one? I'm just <laughs> what uh? What do you think? Uh, what do you? <laughs> what do you? What do you think about aliens? Oh, do you God. think aliens have been here? Everyone thinks there's aliens somewhere. Do you think they've been here? I don't know. Nobody does. I mean, maybe there's something going on here. Yeah. 51 i don't know whatever but i think we're alien is just a relative term to something that isn't where you currently are so do you think okay let me clarify that do you think there are aliens on this planet do you Um, think there are extraterrestrial aliens from (laughs) outer space on our planet or like either currently or they've been here either way Fuck, I don't know. The Earth is <laughs> old, either. dude. The, like, there's obviously a chance we came from elsewhere. I think they planet. fucked monkeys, and that's what we are. <laughs> and that's well, what we are. How about the Stone Ape theory? You know, that that like, too. I think mushrooms so are the plausible. aliens. Well, mushrooms we are, came from space. We are fungal bodies. You know, I've been fungal checking bodies. in with Rick Great Strassman name. and fucking like all of these. Um, Paul St- Stamets. Yeah. Like, I've been checking in with them. Dude. Mushroom They're Paul. All this shit, man. Like, yeah. Have you heard him talk about portobello mushrooms? Oh, I think, I think I've heard it mentioned. So, uh, there's he, some, like, there's some shit deal with it that's it, serious, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he was on Joe Rogan. That is. He was I Joe Rogan. That and one. he got real serious all of a sudden. And yeah. he's like, I can't talk about this for my own safety. Yeah, for, let's I have just the say right to, to yeah. not respond to that. And know. he's like, he says it was it's a very explosive area of conversation. Yeah. Portobellos are combustible. <laughs> so he was telling people without telling them. Also, that the component of them that makes them explosive uh is also it causes cancer. Oh. And so big portobello. Really don't want Paul Stamets talking about this. Big Portobello. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. I, I think, yeah, there's there's certain territories where, for in the for the case that there are fucked up people in the world, some things shouldn't be revealed. I wonder if that was why. You know, it's like I wonder if there's some like serious like. Oh, I would definitely be making bombs with Portobello. <laughs> If I knew that. Yeah, it's it's bad that I know that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Porta. On some real shit though, I'm I'm like uh if you haven't noticed, <laughs> I'm very radical about uh what I think we should do uh in the world. Yeah. As much as I'm I am like, yeah, love, spread a message. Mushroom you, cloud. You can't <laughs> you can't heal if someone you can't heal a wound if someone's stabbing you. Like, Mm -hmm. that's never going to get healed if someone's continuing to hurt you. Right. You have to remove the problem first. And um, our government doesn't give a fuck about us. None of our, none of the governments in the world give a fuck about people. Mm -hmm. It's all a way to control people. um, And we work for the system. The system does not work for us. Mm -hmm. That's not how. We need to change it, how shit's being run. Like yeah. Not only just in the U.S., but everywhere. Overall, as 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 mankind, as womankind, as people kind, as kind people, people can. Yeah. Um. We need to yeah, be more kind do. to our Earth. You know, yeah. Planet. That's one of the big things we need to change. Is companies are just doing this. Companies are allowed to just. And here's the thing: is like, we could change this. Mm-hmm. We're perfectly capable. Of, we could 
solving so many big yeah. problems. And if they won't do it, we could make them. Or we could just do it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what I mean. Like if these, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if these companies won't stop hurting the earth, we can stop them. Yeah. We have the ability to do that. Um, like America is kind of founded on Democracy. we're going to take take things into our own hands. Mm -hmm. Like, like, hey, Britain, fuck you. We're our own place now. Uh, yeah. Come and get us. Like that's that's what this country's founded on, yeah. and like it like we just like the Boston Tea Party, it's like you're not you're just gonna take that tax money. Okay, fuck you. We're just throwing your shit in the river then. Mm. Like we used to do something about it, but yeah. now like the state runs us. Our taxes go to who fucking knows what. Mm. Um, we're all being robbed, and we're letting it happen. Yeah. So um, we're really overdue for some shit, but. Um, <laughs> let's get off of that before the fbi shows up <laughs> this thing's listening to me all the time i'm sure i'm on a list somewhere oh <laughs> yeah you're on the naughty list i'm on the naughty list santa santa didn't visit you have a good christmas <laughs> yeah hey merry christmas merry everyone. christmas happy new year yeah did you um, were you here or did you go home day. what were you here for christmas i was in ohio nice yeah with Emily's family, um, it was chill. And you, you were, you stayed here. You kept I stayed doing here. Your thing. I went to a friend's house. We ate ribs and baked beans. It was, it was Ooh, fucking lit. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. enjoying celebrating holidays because I never did that as a kid. So, yeah. Um, shit. Yeah, that's crazy. I went to um a friend's Hanukkah like menorah lighting party too, Ooh. and that was fucking awesome. Like they're like, you know what a dreidel is. I have no idea. So it's like a top, like you spin a top and it like spins around. Okay. Uh, but they all have like these Hebrew letters on them. And basically they-, they I've seen one recently. Yeah. Okay. They use it for gambling. So it's like, like you spin it and then like one of the faces means uh, you get the whole pot. Mm -hmm. One means you get half the pot. One means you get nothing. And one means you have to add to it. Okay. So like you each go around and you take turns spinning it. And then, like, eventually one of you is going to end up with the whole pot. Okay. And I had so much fucking fun doing that. Yeah. I'm like, this is awesome. Okay. I'm like, I either really like this or I just really like gambling and didn't know it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. I, um, I've been cleaning a lot of um, houses recently and they had all, they had all the candles ready and shit. And, um, yeah. I, uh... I've definitely uh, celebrated Christmas every year, and but I've I haven't visited my family in like four years for Christmas. Mm. Um, but yeah, it was like really chill with Emily's family. Um, I think last year I just like did my own little thing at home, you know. Yeah, I'm not really super. It, as into traditional things as most people are like i'll play along and like oh yeah we're here for the fam all right yeah yeah but uh i like just um there's a part of me that loves just not conforming with the the usual yeah you know? um and i don't know back when i was like very first a stoner maybe like when i was still like super stoked about just Hell is smoking weed all the time. I, I remember like getting up at like 6 a.m. and being like, I'm gonna wake and bake and then fall asleep under the Christmas tree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah those were right. those were the early days. Lazy days so where you just lazy, woke, like, wake up high and then go yeah. to sleep high. Dude, that's young stoner days. Yeah. It's that's just what that reminded me of. That's a that's a great way to spend the day. I haven't done that in a minute. <laughs> Pure blissful. Yeah. You did you went to public school, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh <laughs> I was I was homeschooled and like I would I would just like do my homework at night because I like I was all I'm also like very untraditional. Mm. I like wanted to be a nocturnal as much as possible. Oh, so yeah. I spent like a couple of years of my life. Like, I would 
wake up at like four or five p.m. and go to bed Whoa. at like go to bed at like eight a.m. Damn. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. I actually sometimes I miss that. Yeah. Uh, because it 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 was a lot of fun. Like um, and you get so much time to just like do whatever you want. Nighttime is cool because like Nighttime everyone's asleep. Is it's quiet. Yeah. Being outside at night, I really enjoy. Uh, being under the moon and like yeah, just being in nature when it's really quiet mm-hmm. is very peaceful. Yeah, I want to go on a walk really soon, is. actually. Me and yeah. my friend Taylor will go like on hiking trails at like 2 a.m. Oh, that's so cool. And it's so much fun. Uh I did that once at like midnight, night hiking. That's it's great. Fun. Yeah, I love that. Especially when there's just enough light to see where you're going. You oh, know? yeah. yeah. Like if you don't have to have a flashlight, <laughs> it's even better. Moon. Yeah. Yeah. Shit. Actually, I think last night was a full moon. Oh, really? Yeah. I think I missed it. <laughs> Sometimes I forget to look up. Yeah. You know? Even on a... It was either I... last night or the night before that I looked up. It was like, like, damn, that's really pretty. I don't look up enough often either. We should yeah. look up more. We should right. look at the sky more. Yeah, we should look up to each other. <laughs> <laughs> look up to our friends. <laughs> we should look mm. up things more. <laughs> no, we should. <laughs> it's been 10 minutes since I've been on TikTok. Dude, anytime I ask a question, I'm always so questionable. And I'm like, I wonder why this and that. And anytime there's just like a thing that like my girlfriend Emily has this thing where if, if she doesn't know it, she just like automatically will just look it up because she just like mm. she has to know everything. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like always like get, get getting information and like, oh wow, I didn't know that. Um, but it's just funny that like immediate like shit, I have to know that now. Now that yeah. I don't know it, it's it's <laughs> I do that too sometimes. There's some subjects where I like I want to know. Oh yeah. 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 Um, how did you get this scar? Can you talk oh, about this that? one? Yeah. Oh shit. It was um it's not noticeable. It, the light caught it just for yeah. a second. So um my uh mother just got fucked up by Voldemort and he, he was just like yoink on me. So I'm, I'm a wizard. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so I was like, I don't know, I was probably eight years old or nine or some shit, preteen. Was I even, yeah, maybe I was early. No, I could have been like seven years, six years old. I don't know. I don't remember it, basically. Moral of the story. Um, but I guess uh, word has it, I was like jumping around being a young energetic little boy while there's um there I think they were digging footings for what became the music room where I would rehearse and just fuck around and play music all the time in Utah. And it was like a separate building from my house, my parents' house. Um and they were digging footings with the backhoe. And has the the arm and the bucket. And I think mm. I just like he didn't see me and it was like turning and just poof, like bashed me right here. And I, from what I heard, it was super bloody. And uh holy shit. Um I don't think I had any brain damage from it as far as I know. I beg to differ. I'm just kidding. <laughs> ah, me too. I beg to differ all the time. Um <laughs> I wouldn't be where I am with that that yeah. backhoe hitting me with that bucket. <laughs> No, but yeah, it's like it's crazy because I don't remember any of that. Mm. But it's like, yeah, this is the only trace that I have left of it. But yeah, that's what I was told. Same with the mm. getting bit by a spider. I don't remember that mm. shit. I don't have that good of long term memory. It amazes me how well some people can remember super far ago. Like, oh yeah, when I was like two years old, I remember doing this and that. It's like, how did. My brain doesn't reach that far. My brain's get, like, too present and concerned with now to fucking like hold on to these things that are so far away. Yeah. Yeah. I um uh, uh, do you ever get like like something will like trigger a memory? 
like a smell mm. or I don't know, like someone says something or something like that. Um, like that's when I remember shit is like like randomly. Oh yeah, yeah. Like like what the fuck? Yeah. That's like an old memory, and I just remember that all of a sudden. I love having that. Yeah. You're like, I haven't remembered this in forever. <laughs> yeah. But I I uh I also don't remember things like I can't recall things by like force, like make myself remember things. Mm-hmm. But like I'll get random memories. Like I, I forgot that happened. Yeah. yeah. Well, you were stunting me earlier with all these like, have you ever felt betrayed? <laughs> it's like fuck, I don't, I don't remember ever being betrayed. betrayed. <laughs> I'm betraying my own. It's memory. interesting because you did say I know I have. I just can't think of it right now. I thought that was right. interesting. Yeah. I'm sure at a certain point in my life, if I was betrayed, I probably perceived it differently than I would now. Well, that's you know, I think that's really healthy. It's like you right. don't even remember because you're past it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I try to be with everything. I guess. Yeah. Why well, hang on to that? Yeah. Like we're our our own stream of consciousness is just a stream and like. Anything that's floating by is just there for a moment and then passes, you know. Yeah. And that's life too. The same. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Everything's fleeting. Yeah. The universe is gonna eventually experience a heat death and everything will die. Right. And that's what makes it so fucking yeah. It's silly and stupid, but also it's so also fucking, fucking special. It's it's silly it. and stupid, it's special, and it's also fucking metal as shit. <laughs> like it's fucking punk as fuck. Yeah, dude. Yeah, like it's fucking raw. That's so indie. You <laughs> <laughs> heard someone describe something as so indie, and it makes you want to throw. It. <laughs> yeah, I am so independent. Actually, I record my own music. No, <sighs> I guess we should probably start wrapping this up. We've yeah. been, we could do this forever, but it's been damn late. ten forty. It's late. Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah, we How went... long has it been? Where are we at? We started at like probably eight twenty, so it's been like two and a half hours. Whoa! Well, What's this it says? Say? This says two hours and five minutes. What? I'm at, I'm oh, oh you down. know what? We did. We did spend a lot of time hanging out over there, so it's not as oh, long yeah, as true. Yeah. yeah, but still, if yeah. anyone's still here, thanks. I guess. Thanks yeah. for sticking it out. You must be doing something really boring to still be listening to us <laughs> at this point. But you're very special. It's just so. this is just you talking to yourself. I know, right? to it back. I'm like listening back and I'm like, oh my god, I'm so yeah. dumb. <laughs> Check out interview uh yeah. music. I'll I'll put a link up if you'll send it to me. Yeah. For stuff you got out now. Yeah. You got an album coming out mm-hmm. so, probably sometime this year. Um, so or next, next year. year. Well, yeah. I guess by the time this is out, yeah, sometime this oh. year, twenty twenty four. Yeah, yeah. Um, good point. But yeah, uh, and if, uh, if none of you have listened to my stuff that's currently out, feel free to. It's uh, it's a, it's a, I think it's a good list, and I have five, four, four or five EPs out, and uh, I put my whole soul into this stuff so you'll get a piece of what i what i really love doing in each of my songs and i, I have a lot more to show you are so. a genuine and very beautiful person and that translates to your music um, oh yeah thank you you yeah that that really shows through in what you do um you can tell you know, like you, you know, like when you're listening to an artist that is not having fun, like it's commercialized, like you know, like you know when yeah. you see a band and they're like, "Yeah, I'm here," you yeah. know, like you clearly enjoy what you do. Um, thank you for what you do. Live music saves lives. I oh, wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't be here without live music. So yes, it's very important. Same. You're, you're a hero. <laughs> well, don't you, give me that. You don't have I'm to just, say that. I'm just going. Doo, 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 doo. You don't have to say that. I'll say that. <laughs> um, check out Spirit Ritual. Yeah. Check out the, uh, the episode we did with Jeff and the rest of Spirit Ritual. Yeah. Also, if you haven't already. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And uh, check out uh, the Twisted Tea Garden yeah. as well. Uh, they put on a lot of really cool shows there. They promote artists, uh, help them get their name around. Oh, yeah. Um, that's another great thing you'll do. Yeah, absolutely. 
and it's just all a matter of bringing people together you know one unified scene yeah and yeah. I, I love what you do with this too Thank thanks you. for bringing me back any anytime you're welcome back anytime okay. uh we'll, we'll do more of these in the future we'll give it a few months but i'd love to have you back absolutely alice we'll see you next week